But I come from a, um, a work background as well. So my background is in architecture. I'm an architect, uh, more from the facilities and urban planning side of things. So before I came to Carnegie Mellon, I was working a lot with the federal government, a lot of local corporations and hospitals. Um, when I came to Carnegie Mellon in 1994, um, I was doing mostly uh, three-dimensional work in CAD and uh, facilities and GIS. Um, I started to work a lot with the city of Pittsburgh when they started to develop their first GIS system back in the late 80s and the early 90s. Um, and so now what I do is I teach between the School of Architecture and the School of Public Policy. So I teach three-dimensional uh, building information modeling, uh, 3D visualization, and as Tom said, my real research and focus is in uh, GIS and especially as it relates to health. Um, as Tom did say, we, I've written three books, um, and so right now, Will Gore and I are updating our GIS tutorial workbook for the new Pro um, edition, which is where it seems that Esri is heading all of its futures to. My research is in health, and some of you may know my co-author, Will Gore, whose research is in crime. And so these are the three that we have been continually working on and continually update. And by the way, if anybody uses these and you have feedback or comments, we're always looking to change and improve things, so uh, feel free to um, contact me about any of that. So um, the, if you're not familiar with Carnegie Mellon, um, we are um, in Pittsburgh, and we have um, many different colleges. We have seven different colleges, and I'm in the College of Fine Arts and Architecture, and the Heinz College is public policy. We have two sides of the Heinz College. Uh, one is information systems, and the other one is public policy. And so what we do is we have this hybrid between data analytics on the IT side and then the policy realm of things. Within the School of Architecture, um, we're a school of architecture that is very heavy in computational analysis and computational design. Uh, if you're not familiar with the founding of Carnegie Mellon, Andrew Carnegie was a very technical guy. He started off as a, a Carnegie Tech, which is a technical school. And we still are very much computer science, robotics, technical. And that spills over into uh, the School of Architecture. So what I'm going to talk about today is a special project that we just completed for the city of Pittsburgh and uh, the mayor's office and city planning and for a conference that was put on by the mayor and Andre Hines. There was a recent conference in Pittsburgh called the P4 Summit, which stood for People, Planet, Place, and Performance. And this was a summit of uh, many people in the region who are interested in uh, sort of the urban um, planning of Pittsburgh, the uh, smart cities, things of this sort. And so uh, they came to me um, in December and said, we want you to build a 3D model for us. A 3D, and we said, okay, 3D model. Do you want a physical model? Do you want a, uh, a computer model? And what do you want that model to do? And they said, well, we don't know. We want a 3D model. So I said, okay, so <laughs> let's, let's start again. Uh, what do you want the model to do? <laughs> so we finally came to the conclusion that um, the, they wanted a model that would have GIS data analytics with it because uh, the city is, uh, uses GIS and they're very active with the county using GIS. And so we decided, okay, that was going to be the base of one thing. Um, and then, you know, how would we use that model? What would that model be doing? So I was from the School of Architecture, representing the School of Architecture in the Heinz College, deciding about this model. Um, we started to gather other people on campus that would be interested in a three-dimensional model. And I'm going to talk about these two other parts on campus. One is the Entertainment Technology Center, which added a gaming component to the model. And then the other one is the School of Computer Science and Robotics, who is doing a lot of traffic studies. So we have a thing called Traffic 21, which is looking at traffic simulation. And so uh, because none of us really had experience with City Engine, which is what we decided to build our 3D model in, uh, we came to Esri and we said, could you guys help us build this initial uh, model? So what I want to do today is I want to take you through um, the steps of how we built this model and how we envision using the model for the city and also within um, Carnegie Mellon. And then I'm going to end it by having Ray Gastel, who is the new city planner for the city of Pittsburgh, um, actually show you um, what we did, the end result for the P4 conference, which we have a little video of. So how do we start? Um, first of all, I have to thank Matt Mercurio, who's in the audience today and will be speaking later today, um, who helped us with the LiDAR data. 
So we uh, were able to get the LIDAR data from the county and um, also from the city, and we had a PhD student in the School of Architecture um, build the three-dimensional model of just the, the basic blocks from the buildings. And so he took a few weeks to build this three-dimensional model, and then what we did was we turned it over to Esri um, to start to pull in the city engine data. So one of the things you're looking at here is uh, the Smithville Street. Oh, and I should tell you that we were focusing on just one part of the city, of course, when they said a, a 3D model for the city, I was said, wow, a 3D model for the whole city, uh, envisioning all of this complex data for the whole city. Um, we decided that we needed to focus on one area, which was the Smithfield Street, which is an area that is um, going to be revitalized in the next few years. Um, so one of the things we started to do was gather data from uh, different developers within the city, different people that were using uh, BIM models. So what you're looking at here is the Smithfield Street Bridge in Pittsburgh, and we're on the balcony of a, um, a BIM model for a condominium complex that is being proposed um, in the south side. So we're looking over towards the city here, and um, that's sort of what Esri was starting to pull in. And then Esri uh, was using City Engine uh, to pull in all of the data, so we had the GIS base data, so we had things like the street center lines, the sidewalks, the curbs, the topography, the buildings. And so uh, we had one of the programmers from Esri start to build the city engine model uh, using the three-dimensional data, the two-dimensional and three-dimensional data. So you can see here that uh, one of the things you can do with city engine is start to uh, set up rules. And you can say, okay, we're gonna have a sidewalk that is uh, this number of feet wide, we're going to have X number of lanes, and you can start to adjust the city engine model based on what the rules are. So he spent um, a while doing this, and then also building a three-dimensional geometry. So you have things like um, the street lights and the trees and the buses and the cars and whatnot, and then getting the brick on the streets. Um, one of the things you're looking at here is um, ways that we could change the Smithfield Street. So this came in with the School of Architecture. And so you'll see that the image in the upper right there is looking at what would it be like to be a parade street, a destination street. Uh, what would it be uh, looking like if it was a street that had um, a, uh, a local street or a street that was a connector street? And you'll see a little bit more of this in Ray's uh, video. So we were working with Esri and the School of Architecture in our Master of Urban Design studio. And so we had eight students that were working on three different scenarios. If you guys have been downtown recently, um, you know, Smithfield Street is a little worn out in some areas. And so one of the things that they were coming up with was all of these different uh, proposals. And so they went through the typical semester of what an urban design student would do in looking at um, synthesizing the data, looking at the history of the street, and then coming up with design principles, uh, planning principles to come up with different scenarios. So they spent their time gathering all this data. And you can see that uh, this is just some of their work that is shown here, um, looking at the precedents in different cities, looking at what was there now. Um, we're looking at something called a complete street. So we're looking at uh, the economics of the street. Uh, we're looking at the environment. Uh, we're looking at creating uh, bike lanes. You'll, you probably know if you've been to downtown Pittsburgh, there's a lot of changes happening. Uh, they're still trying to figure out how do we have these different bike lanes? How is that working? What do we have as one-way streets? Um, what, what happens to mass transit? Uh, we're looking at, again, all of these different scenarios of different uh, ways to route um, bikes throughout the city of Pittsburgh. What happens to the parking if we have different kinds of scenarios with these new areas? Um, and then also looking at the district energy. So uh, I'll touch upon this again in a minute, but one of the things that we're doing within the School of Architecture is looking at capturing uh, live energy data within many of these buildings. We're doing some prototypes on campus right now where we're using OSI um, soft pie. Uh, we're taking that energy data and then we're putting it into GIS so we can do real time um, management of uh, the energy within the, the different buildings. And so what we're trying to do here in the, the urban design students, we're trying to find this balance between having these uh, vehicles that are moving through the Smithfield Street area, having pedestrians, having um, a good work-life balance. And so one of the things that they're doing is they're trying to come up with different scenarios throughout the day. 
So what did Smithfield Street look like um, during the day when we have the businesses downtown? Uh, what, what would it look like if we could have that be a lively area moving into the evening? What does it look like if people live there? So all of this was tying into this whole idea of smart cities, um, and what, what tied that in to then was the, um, the School of Architecture again, the building performance. And so one of the things that um, I'm not an expert in, my colleagues in the School of Architecture are, are looking at extracting this energy data. And so we're again setting up um, these live sensors within our uh, different buildings on campus. And I'm not going to get into the technical details of this, but I do have the URLs here that we can make this available, um, hopefully, to everybody. If you guys want to learn more about this, you can just even go to CMU's um, School of Architecture website, and there are many links there from our, my colleagues showing how they're doing this. And this is something that we want to pull in, perhaps, to the city engine system to start to get that live data that is streaming uh, from the temperature controls and the sensors within the buildings into the city engine model. Um, but I wanted to show you here other sensors. This is from our Robotics Institute, and it's a project called Traffic 21. And I'll just show you just uh, very briefly here. Uh, what we've done is we've set up these different sensors uh, throughout the city. And I think I might move on from this one. It's the traffic. So we have these sensors on traffic lights. And so what they'll do is they will sense when we have traffic that is um, congested, and then it'll change the speed of the lights. And then as traffic slows down, it'll change the speed of the lights. And so one of the things that they have uh, found is that we've done these pilots. One was in the East Liberty neighborhood of the city. Um, they found that uh, because of these sensors, we're able to get this traffic through uh, quicker. So we have things like um, less wait time, less number of stops, uh, lower emissions. And so this kind of relates into some of the health work that I'm doing. So if we can get this traffic moving through, we're not going to have these idling cars you know, sitting in the different areas of Pittsburgh. Um, I don't know if anybody's from this area, but I go through this area all the time, and it actually works. Uh, my husband and I were just going somewhere, and he said, let's avoid that area. I said, no, 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 no. We can go to that area now, because Traffic 21 is there, and they're getting those signals, and they're moving things along. So, um, so the, this came into the three-dimensional model, though. And so, let's click on this one and see if I can get this one to work here. Um, the the three-dimensional model here uh, is work that they're doing with Traffic 21. And they want to take part of our model and pull this in so they can um, add some realism to the traffic studies they're doing. Although they said to us, we don't want too much of your model because that's going to mess up um, us looking at the traffic. What we're really interested in is looking at simulation of traffic at different times during the day. And so they can have populated here with their software, um, how many vehicles do we have? How do we need to keep this, the flow of the traffic going? So they're trying to look at this uh, from the entire city perspective as to where are these people coming from? They're doing all kinds of, um, you know, uh, all kinds of uh, traffic counts and studies to see how the traffic is flowing through the city. So one of our goals is to eventually take this model that we're working on and give it to the Traffic 21 people so they can start to do their analysis. So moving along, uh, the next group is um, our Entertainment Technology Center, which is um, a, a lot of times people think of this as just you know gaming, pure gaming. And I, to be honest, wasn't quite familiar with they, what, what they did until they started to get involved in this project. There's a spin-off company called SimCoach Games, which is a spin-off from ETC. And one of the things that we asked them to do was add a simplified, quote, gaming component to our work. And so I'll just give you a quick example here of the kinds of work that they do. Um, there is a proposed um, a bus rapid transit system between Oakland and downtown. And this is going to be going kind of through the Hill District along the bluff um, near New Kane University. And so one of the things that the uh, gaming folks will do is take our three-dimensional model and then they'll add, and this is a website, if you do a Google search on BRT, this is the first thing that'll come up. Um, it's interactive, I don't have it interactive right now. But for instance, you could say, I want to see different kinds of station options. So if you click on that, it'll show you the different kinds of bus stations you could design here. Um, you could say, what would it look like if I added a bike rack? What would it look like if I added solar panels? And so what this is doing is this is allowing the citizens to vote on how they want this to look. 
Um, and, this would be, and by the way, this is in Oakland. This is uh, right by UPMC, Presbyterian Hospital, if you're familiar with this area. What would it look like with different kinds of bike lanes? And if we move the lanes, what would that look like? And so what it does, too, here is it quantifies this. So it allows the citizens to have participation, but then quantify uh, what it would take to do this. So what I want to show you here is um, the culmination of all of this. So for the last uh, four months, uh, we were working with, again, um, the School of Architecture, Master of Urban Design students, with Esri, with Ray Gastel, who's the city planner, all of his traffic people, coming up with these scenarios. And so the urban design students came up with three different options for Smithfield Street. One of them, again, is a local street. So what would it look like if it was housing and mixed use and people living there? What would it look like if it was a destination street? What, uh, if we have the, when the pirates and the stealers and the penguins all win in one year and we want to have a big <laughs> celebration, what would that look like? Could that be on Smithfield Street? Um, what would it look like if um, we wanted it to be a connector? So if we don't want to have people there but we want to use that as a connector from maybe uh, Station Square over to different parts of the city. So we worked together with all of this and then it was uh, building this model both in City Engine with the input of this live urban design options that were happening and then turning it over to the gaming component. So I want to show you uh, what we ended up showing here. So let's keep our fingers crossed. We're going to have a video, right, Mark? Maybe yeah. it's going to work. Okay. So I'm going to click on it. Okay. So I'm going to let Ray Gastel take it from here. Do we need the speaker?
additional data. There's a lot of work, by the way, in getting uh, the, the photographs of those buildings and the facades of those buildings to, to match up. There's a lot of a short, shortcut kind of stuff you can do to do um, repetitive work in getting that model built. And so what we're doing now is we're coming around to the other side of Pinnacle Street. And then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, zoom in to a little bit more detailed view of Smithville Street. And eventually what we want to do is have all of the city engine data attached to the city buildings. And so we can do, again, some of this energy modeling, this energy analysis, um, just occupancy analysis, things of that sort. And so now what's going to happen is we're going to drop down into the street. And at this point, we're going to release it from city engine. And this is coming into the gaming world. So this is what we had SimCoach Games and the entertainment technology folks take over to do. And so what you're seeing here is um, a very similar stuff that we could do in City Engine, but some of it gets into a little bit more of that interaction. And so if we wanted to have uh, Ray as a planner who's really not all that familiar with City Engine and the technologies, if we wanted to have him come up and look at different scenarios, uh, he could do this. And so right now you're seeing just basically people walking through, we're looking at it from a, Burza, or from a street view, not a Burza view, but a street view. Um, we're just moving along kind of quickly throughout the street. Um, and again, you know, bringing in a lot of this, um, this information. These buses had to be created, the cars had to be created. Some of it is uh, somewhat specific to Pittsburgh, so all of that uh, geometry had to be created. The buttons that you're seeing there are options to look at the different scenarios. So when he clicks on edit here, we can look at it from different kinds of views. And so this is where we wanted to see the three different options. So what would it look like if it was a destination street? And so when you do that, um, the streets change. You'll see that we have the bike lanes here now. We have um, the sidewalks have changed a little bit. And so this again, if, he's, if we're trying to show the citizens of this area, what would it look like if Smithville Street was a destination street? Here's what it is. Um, and again, we built these simplified tools here, so it wouldn't be overly complicated. You don't have to go in and know the rules and make the changes there. It's already pre-done. Um, the the buttons that you see at the top eventually will be populated. Um, what, would it, what would a destination street look like um, if we had the environment changes? Maybe we have more trees in here, we have less trees. What would it look like with the economics if we added X number of stores? How would that change the economics in downtown? So that's what we're doing here. Um, and then, um, this is just Ray talking again. This is the P4 conference. By the way, this was all live. You know, we've talked about doing these things live. This was a real risk that Ray did. Um, we had people in a control room from SimCoach Games doing all of this. So what you're seeing here is not a video. These are people live changing some of these scenarios. Um, I'll just show you a couple more here. Um, again, once we populate this, we're hoping that uh, either between City Engine or um, Unity, which is what SimCoach Games is using, we'll be able to have all of this quantified. So when we look at these options, uh, the city planner and the mayor and others can make these intelligent decisions about how we're changing things within the city. Um, we're coming back up here and we're looking at another scenario. So in this case, what would it look like if it was a local street? So we're clicking local street there, and then we're going to go back down to the street level. So you can see um, the street view, what, what happens to the street if it's a local street. So we're coming down here, and then that's going to change a little bit here. So with the local street, um, this is again, if we started to have um, businesses here, if we started to populate that with different, um, you know, you can see the sidewalk cafes and things like that that are changing. So the other thing that we started to add into this was some of the architectural aspects. So what would it look like if we had uh, a different kind of an open building? And so we want to start to combine our urban planning uh, scenarios and backgrounds with um, the GIS data. So I think that uh, he's going to continue on here, but I think that I'm going to kind of speed it up just to show you one last thing. I think I can. Oh. oh, you see it was live? 
So <laughs> the person's computer started to reboot, by the way, in the middle of this. And they were so upset because they said, you know, I didn't mean for it to reboot. I said, no, that's actually good. It shows that it was a lot of proof. <laughs> um, I think I'll let this go because it is, it's about, it's just about one minute more here. So this is coming into, again, the architecture. So if we had, um, you know, some different kinds of architecture, what would that look like? And so this is, again, where we're taking not only the city engine GIS data, but we're also looking at some of the building information modeling data. And so this is where we're taking some of the BIM models and we're pulling those back out here. So I think I will stop it here because let me just tell you some of the conclusions here. So one of the things that uh, this did, and Ray's just gonna probably just wrap it up here as well. Actually, I think that worked out pretty well where I, I took over Ray's talk here. Um, so, so what happened then with the P4 conference was we ended up uh, showing this model to three different groups. And we actually were looking at three sites in Pittsburgh. Uh, one is the Almano site, which is along the river um, in Homestead. Uh, the other site was Smithfield Street. And another one is the Uptown area, which are three sites that the mayor is very interested in looking at revitalizing. Uh, the Uptown area is near the Consul um, Energy Center and what's happening there with the old, um, uh, the old arena that was there. So we took these models and then we broke up into three groups. And then everybody at the conference got on buses. We went to each one of these. Uh, we looked at it, we walked it, we understood it, and we came back and we gave recommendations to the mayor. So what's happening now is um, this Thursday, uh, Esri is coming back to uh, debrief us. We're gonna debrief about what happened with the conference and then figure out where we're gonna go from here. So one of the big challenges is how do we continue building this model um, and then how do we use it? Um, how do we, we're gonna use it within the School of Architecture within the Master of Urban Design program. So every year we pick a different area of the city. Um, I'm having two of my students that are current students build the model for next semester. And then how do we turn that over to the city? And what does the city really do with this? And how much of a gaming component do we need in it? So that's um, a little bit about what we're working on. One of the things that I just wanted to reemphasize is that Carnegie Mellon is very much about interdisciplinary. So I'm ending with our motto, which is connect and collaborate, because one of the things you will see here is that we're working with architecture, computer science, public policy, entertainment technology, to try and give us end product that will be useful both for us and hopefully for the city of Pittsburgh. So with that, um, I want to thank you. And I guess, uh, do we have yeah, a time, time, for a, time for a question or two? Or? Yes. Software that the gaming. Yeah. It's called Unity. Unity. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you though, it's a combination of Unity and um, 3D Studio Max mm -hmm. and uh, a little bit of AutoCAD. So if you look at really what went into all of this, it was ArcGIS, um, Revit from Autodesk, Vim, um, Unity from Simcoach Games, 3D Studio Max. Building that furniture is very complicated, and all of those, so we're trying to build up a library of all of that. Esri has a little bit of a library, but not specific to Pittsburgh. You know, the clock, I don't know if you noticed it, but the clock down by the old Kaufman's building by Macy's um, was something we had to build. So that was done like in 3D Studio Max, probably. Thanks. Does anybody use City Engine? I have a question for you guys. Does anybody here use City Engine? No, so this is, um, you know, if you haven't seen Pro, it's very much oriented in 3D, so ArcGIS Pro is much faster. If you've not gotten into the 3D world because of the slowness, it's like lightning speed faster. Um, so there's some real promise with the three-dimensional world in, uh, in Esri's future. Any questions? So I'll be around. Oh, yes. Well, um, oh. We've heard, I think, a lot about in, in the upcoming years these driverless cars driverless yep. public transit as well. Yep. Um, is that something that's on your horizon? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I don't know if you guys have seen this, but um, the Uber is now um, working with the School of Computer Science, and we have a lab set up down in uh, Lawrenceville. Um, so the head of the School of Computer Science says 2030 is when we will see common driverless cars throughout the city. And yes, so I should say the Traffic 21 people aren't quite putting that into this scenario right now because they aren't here right now, but this is something we will be looking at. And also pedestrians. 
and the, bi the, the bicycle. Um, there's a really a mixed feeling right now about these bike lanes because they are new and it is causing a lot of confusion in downtown. So in the traffic, we need to add the bikes and the pedestrians and then the driverless cars as well. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. You.